Hello, Coronacation. Hello, everybody, and happy Easter. My name's Corey. And I'm Andrew. Corey, you're looking sharp, my friend. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Check out the Batman cuff link. Nice. I am so pumped for today about what what all is going to happen. But before we get started, we needed to let everyone know that Easter is for everybody. Everybody. So let's make sure that you're watching with your whole family. Yeah, so if you're a teenager, then this is for you. And and you too, parents, if you're a younger kid, get ready. We're about to have some serious fun and we need you to lead the way. Adults, buggle up. This is Easter like you've never done it before. And no matter who you are, we want you to know that Easter is for you. Today we are celebrating our Savior and it's gonna be so fun. Oh, the only way not to have fun is to not participate. So look around. Is anybody missing? If so, hit the pause button and go get them. That's awesome. We're going to get started in three, two, one. Man, good job, Andrew. That was fun. I'm so looking forward to this Easter oh, service. Yeah, it's going to so it's gonna be so good. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, call. Corey, uh, you forgot your tux pants. Well, we're doing a Zoom call. I didn't think it was necessary. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, we're still recording. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? What is up, All Stars and 456? It's Easter, and you know what that means. Yeah, it's peep season, guys. So I think there's two kind of people in the world. There's people who like these guys, and then there's people like me who literally get sick looking at the picture. Like, I can just, can just feel the chewy, grainy nastiness in my mouth right now just thinking about it, and I don't want to think about it. But... Let's go ahead right now and settle things with the family, okay? Thumbs up if you like peeps. And thumbs down if you don't, okay? I hope most of y'all are going thumbs down because peeps are kind of gross, I'm just saying. But that's not the point. What we're doing is a super exciting game and I'm literally so jealous that all of you guys get to do this. So, um, you're gonna need to go get some peeps, okay? I hope you have some around. If not, you can use big marshmallows too. Whatever works. So you'll need peeps and some toothpicks. Now, I want you to take your peeps and get as creative as possible, okay? We need designs. We need eyebrows. If you want to color some eyebrows in, if you want to give them a tutu or something pretty to wear, go for it. But they need to look superb, okay? And then they're going to fight to the death. Yes, we're going to have a peep battle like no other battle, okay? So, basically... You need to get your peep ready, okay? Looking fancy with a mustache like me if you want to do something like that. Or whatever else you want to put on those peeps. And then you stick the uh, toothpick in them like a, like a joust. Think of it like a joust, right? So have it pointing straight forward and take one peep and set it on the plate. And then your other peep and set it on the plate opposite with the toothpicks facing each other like they're about to duel to the death with their lightsabers or swords or just toothpicks if that's how you're feeling. But you're gonna have your two peeps competing and you put them in the microwave, close the door, and set it for 45 seconds. Now please don't actually microwave it for 45 seconds. That would be really gross and I think you would regret that. But start it and you'll begin to see why they're fighting. And they're gonna puff up and blow and eventually one's gonna stab the other or they're all just gonna fall to pieces. But either way, you're gonna have a victorious peep and you're gonna have a defeated peep. And once they stab each other, please take it out. Don't don't leave it in. You don't want burned sugary mess everywhere. But once you do that, you'll know who the winner is. So have a competition between your family. Pick a peep, and whoever's peep wins, you win. Maybe you get to 
eat the microwave peep or something. But have a competition. It's going to be super awesome. And if you do not have peeps marshmallows, do not worry because we have this slide. All right, guys, who won? I need to know, I need to know, I need to know. Okay, post it on Facebook, tag us, whatever. I want to see these peep victories, please. <sighs> that was a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be, but now we've got another game, and for this one, you're gonna need a lot, a lot, a lot of socks, okay? So grab socks, stinky socks from your brother's room, clean socks from your parents' room, get them from the laundry room, just get a ton of socks. So you can go ahead and pause the video right here, and then Tucker is going to tell you about the next game. Hey, what's up, family? Happy Easter, and are you guys ready to play a game? Awesome. So this is what we're going to need. We're going to need two players for this game. And we're going to need a laundry basket, which will be our Easter basket, and we're actually going to need a lot of socks. But before you go get all the socks in your house, let me explain what we're going to be doing. So the two players are going to be on an Easter egg hunt, but this is going to be a little different. So once you get all the socks, I'm going to ask you to dump them on one side of the room. Don't worry parents, the socks are going to end up back in the laundry basket. It's going to be good. So the players, they're going to go to the pile of socks on one side of the room and on the other side of the room is going to be the laundry basket. So what the players are going to do, they're going to go to the pile of socks and they're going to find a match. And once they find a match of socks, they're going to roll up the socks like they're an egg and they're actually going to throw the eggs into the laundry basket. So the player with the most eggs in the basket wins. So if you need a scorekeeper, ask your parents, ask one of your family members. But if you can't have a scorekeeper right now, we're going to have an honor system. Uh, but still, parents, guardians, uh, check and see if your student is being honest in all of this. So, um, that's the game. It's going to be exciting. If you need to go get supplies, you can pause the video right now, and I'll be right here waiting for you guys. Everybody ready? Great, so we're going to put a one minute countdown on the clock, and the Easter egg throwdown is going to start in three, two, one, go! So this is actually what the winner of the of the Easter egg throwdown gets. Are you ready? You get socks! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, parents, guardians, make sure that the winner of the Easter egg throwdown gets an awesome sweet treat today. Um, thanks for playing the game with us. We hope you have an awesome day and happy Easter. I hope you're having fun so far. We're celebrating because today is Easter. If you don't know the whole story of Easter, that's okay. Today we'll talk about what makes today, maybe more than any other day, a happy day. But before we get there, I know you have a lot of family and friends who would love to hear from you. And to make that happen, you have a few options. Pause this video and pick one of the challenges 
on the screen to wish your peeps a happy Easter. Okay, so I hope you're blowing up everyone's phones and telling your crew Happy Easter. Even though we're celebrating a little differently than we have before, that's okay. Easter is still happy. And that's not just because of peep wars or Easter baskets or chocolate bunnies, even though those things are awesome. It's still happy because of what happened thousands of years ago at the first Easter. It's the world's most powerful story, and yet it's so simple. So simple that it can be told with laundry. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, it is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, surely he was the son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them. But now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return, so we can live with him forever.
Wow, I hear that story every Easter and it always amazes me. I mean, God sent His Son Jesus into the world to remind us that He is greater than anything that could ever go wrong in our world. The simple fact that Jesus is alive is proof to me that I can face anything bad that happens. I like to think of it this way. I can because Jesus is alive. I can love because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can have strength because Jesus is alive. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to add to this list. I want you to think of what you can do because Jesus is alive. Fill in the blank with your own words. Do it with your family right now and then meet me back here. I can because Jesus is alive. What are you going to fill with the blank with? I'll meet you back here. Awesome. I love conversations like this because when we have them, we can remember how faithful God is and how good He is to us. And when we remember His faithfulness, we can trust Him with anything that's going on in our life right now. I pray that that is true for you and your family too. So now I want you to go out and make some memories with your family today. Have a very, very happy Easter and celebrate that Jesus is alive. Before we sign off though, I want to give you a challenge. I want you to think about taking a picture with your family, making a family memory today. Go outside, wear your pajamas, you can be wearing your regular clothes, play clothes, maybe you dressed up fancy to watch church this morning. That's awesome. Go outside and take a picture with your family. Um, and when you do, I want to encourage you to share it on social media with friends and family, people you love, Share it with us, the church. We want to see your family. And um, the way you can share it with us is at Southern Hills. So tag us at Southern Hills and it'll share with us. Um, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. Um, maybe now more than ever is a time for us to celebrate and remember God's faithfulness and the hope we have in Jesus. He gives us everything we need. After all, that's what makes Easter so happy. Good morning, guys. Today is such a big deal, especially for us followers of Jesus. I mean, it's a big deal for everybody because everybody can put their hope in Jesus who defeated death, who ran out of the grave. This song is called Glorious Day, and it's just all about the hope that we have in Jesus and that, that we used to be dead. We used to be uh, heavy with shame and guilt, but now we're no longer that way because Jesus took all of that to the cross for us. He died on the cross. He was buried and He was raised again to life. You guys sing this with me.
I was a noble fit, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I reign out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You call my name, and I reign out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Oh, amen. Jesus, we thank you so much for the price that you paid on the cross, for taking our sin and our shame to the cross. You freed us. You freed us from our guilt and our shame. Everything that we've done to, to disobey you, and to sin against you, you, you left it right there. You took it all on yourself and you left it right there at the cross. You went to the grave. You took our punishment. The payment was death and you paid it for us. And then you ran out of the grave, which means you gave us life. Thank you so much, Jesus. May we never, ever, ever forget that glorious day. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Celebrate Jesus is alive